All right, number one, let's start with the main event. Lightweight fight between Edson Barboza and Kevin Lee, and this fight took a little bit of a twist on Friday when Kevin Lee came in, he missed weight for this 155 pound fight. He weighed in 157 pounds. That is one pound over the weight limit. Now, how big of a deal is this for Kevin Lee? Well, it could be a big deal for him moving forward. You know, this weekend, not the end of the world. He loses 20% of his purse, but the fight will still go on. However, moving forward, Kevin Lee is a guy who is trying to get his name into title contention. He wants to fight for a 155-pound championship. And when you fight for a belt, eventually you have to make 155 pounds on the dot. You don't even get that one pound allowance up to 156. Kevin Lee fought for an interim title last October. He fought Tony Ferguson. He had trouble making weight uh, for that event. He actually required some additional time to make it down to 155 pounds. He got a little bit of a pass for that situation because he was dealing with a staph infection. Of course, staph infection, that's going to make a weight cut more difficult. But this weight cut was supposed to be very smooth. I saw him in Las Vegas before he headed out to Atlantic City. He told me the weight was good. He was three pounds lighter than he'd ever been um, going into to a, a fight week, traveling to a host city. So he thought he had it all under control. And that was not the case as he missed weight 157 pounds again on Friday. So... You know, moving forward, the UFC, they don't like to have a guy in title contention who has been starting a trend, a history of having trouble making weight because it puts it puts title fights in jeopardy. It puts main events in jeopardy. Kevin Lee, in addition to beating Edson Barboza this weekend, which is no small task in and of itself, he's going to have to come back to Las Vegas and really, uh, really convince the UFC that this is not going to be a problem moving forward, that he can make 155 pounds. He'll need to do that if he wants to remain in this division and be a title contender uh, in this weight class. Now for our final storyline, let's stick with the co-main event, but let's switch our focus to Cub Swanson. Now Cub Swanson has actually fought Frankie Edgar previously. Back in 2014, Cub Swanson was on a six-fight winning streak. He was really close to getting the first UFC title shot of his entire career. You know, looking at Frankie Edgar, he's had his opportunities at UFC championships. He's held a UFC lightweight title. He's fought for the featherweight title multiple times. Cub Swanson still looking for that opportunity for the first time in his career. He was right there in 2014. It was a big fight. Austin, Texas, I was there. Cub Swanson versus Frankie Edgar. And Cub Swanson got absolutely dominated. He was taken down at will. Uh, and it wasn't just the takedowns. It was how uncomfortable he looked off of his back when Frankie Edgar was on top of him. Edgar passed his guard 16 times, according to fight metric in that fight. Eventually finished him in the fifth round. It was a humbling, it was a humbling result for Cub Swanson when he was right on the cusp of title contention. Now, if you look at his record uh, of late, 10-3 and three in his last 13 fights, that's absolutely outstanding. The only losses he suffered were to Edgar, current champion Max Holloway, and current number one contender Brian Ortega. So he is still right there in terms of getting that opportunity for the first time in his career, fighting for a UFC championship, but he really doesn't have any time to lose. He's 34 years old, and all of a sudden, Nipping at his heels is a whole lot of talent at 145 pounds. You look at the rankings at 145 pounds, you've got Zabit Magomed Shapirov, Yair Rodriguez, Renato Moicano, Josh Emmett, Duho Choi, Jeremy Stevens is now having a resurgence in his career. A lot of those guys are very young. They're coming into their own. Cub Swanson needs to get it done right now. He needs to prove that uh, everything he's been saying about his improved wrestling since that loss to Frankie Edgar is in fact the case because if he goes out, and loses a fight in the same manner in which he did three years ago. Not that it will completely eliminate him from title contention, but it will be a very tough loss to bounce back from, um, and it will set him back quite away when you're talking about getting a UFC title shot at this point in his career.